From a village house in the hills of Nagorno-Karabakh to a temporary unfurnished flat an hour outside Yerevan. Annie Grigorian, her husband Artashes Spadalian and their children must start over. Everything they owned, they left behind in the rush to leave. We never imagined leaving. We thought maybe they will give a small part of the land and it will calm down, or that they would negotiate and come to some agreement. But we didn't think that Karabakh would be left with no Armenians. Azerbaijan says the ethnic Armenian security is guaranteed, but no one here believed them. Tens of thousands of people have died fighting for and against Nagorno-Karabakh in the last 30 years. The men of our generation cannot live with the Azerbaijanis. Maybe the women could live somehow, or the elderly. When I talk to my grandfather, he says, well, we were living together back then. Maybe their generation can somehow deal with it and live together, but our generation cannot. We saw so many wars. How can a person who buried a son and didn't even see him adapt to living with them? The family is staying with relatives until they find furniture, but the flat is only theirs for two months, loaned until the owners return after years abroad. I think it might be possible to go back in a few years. No, I hope it might. My husband has big hopes. He's saying, yes, we will go back, but I don't know. For now, though, Annie is worried about school for her son and how they make ends meet. The Armenian government says it's coordinating with aid groups and charities to help provide accommodation, financial support, medical and psychological aid to help families rebuild their lives. But it's a significant challenge for a poor country that's just seen its population increase by 4% in less than a week. Bernard Smith, Al Jazeera, Yerevan. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.